Greetings, fellow traveler. Today, I want to talk about inheritance. Not more so the divine inheritance that we receive from our Creator, from God, but the inheritance that we can receive from family and friends, culture. See, I grew up of the mind and of the affluences that I accepted that we all have our time but our time is to be given to us by another man meaning growing up i i strived a lot to please my father and in doing so i believe that as i became an adult that i would receive my inheritance it took a while to accept the fact that the inheritance the only inheritance that meant anything to me it was my divine inheritance from God. I say this because I I started coming to roadblocks as far as dealing with my father. We're dealing with my elders in my family, not just him, but elders in my family. Because I was working so hard and so diligent to receive validation or honor from them. Not realizing that they were of the mind that I will get it when they're gone. And see, that left me feeling cheated. First, I was mad at them. Over time, I seen the frustration or the anger that I carried was with myself because I had given away my power. See, all the things that I wanted from them, I wasn't giving to myself. And as I slowly changed that perspective and gave it to myself, I had more discord with them, the elders in my life. And this goes outside of family as well. Right. Let's stick to family for this scenario. I became to realize that the more that I trusted and respected myself and honored myself, that I received more of my divine inheritance from God. See, I wasn't here to satisfy another man. I was here to satisfy myself. I was here to conquer those things that I myself feared, not the things that others feared. So whereas I will put myself on a pedestal for being able to do or achieve things that others in my family could not achieve, it still left me with a hole inside, a nice big void. When I began to honor myself more, as outlandish as it may have appeared to them, I grew more confident. I stepped into more power. I was able to confidently challenge what I believed to be true before. Now, whether they liked it or didn't like it, that's on them. But see, the, the roles had now reversed. It went from me striving to satisfy them to only focusing on satisfying myself. And that in order for me to do that, I didn't have to belittle them, treat them uh, negatively, if you will. I simply had to stand on my square. I simply had simply had to be who I designed myself to be powerful, very powerful. Now, are our relationships the same? Not at all. Do those relationships exist in some shape, form, or fashion? They will never be the same. I had to make my peace with that. I had to grieve. I had to like really go through stages of grief just to accept that and embrace it. It is what it is. I'm sharing that with you to say whether it's our uh, so-called friends, acquaintances, associates, family, strangers, it doesn't matter. Nobody owes us anything. We owe ourselves. And when we do or act upon the, the things or ideas or beliefs that we have, to honor ourselves, it leaves less room for regret because we're learning more about ourselves. That curious, mysterious version of ourselves that we haven't met yet. That's the journey. That's the relationship to build because the more you build that relationship with yourself and with God, your creator, you expand on a level that you have never even imagined for yourself. And in doing so, 
for reasons and seasons, you will have interactions and relationships that help you move forward. All those relationships are not to be held on to for life. Some are, some are. That's okay. I'm sharing this to remind you that trusting in who you are, understanding who you were, and having a little inkling of where you're headed will do way more for you over the course of your journey than believing in somebody else to guide you. Now, God is not somebody. God is everything, everybody. So you believe in God all day. But people, man, flesh, nah. It's not, it's not, <laughs> that's not it. Receive the messages from people and don't honor the messenger. God uses any and everything to send messages to you. Our job is to receive the message. The messenger is almost non-existent when you look at the message. And you move forward with the message because it's there for you. Now, God will use those who speak to us sweetly to give us messages at times. And sometimes we're a little bit more stubborn or we're hard headed or God just uses who God has right there in front of us, which is sometimes somebody that we do not like. Sometimes it's people that we do not deal with. But listen to the message. When you get that message, you're like, oh, OK, I see. I see. And you'll, you'll begin interacting with the world a little bit differently. I'm not saying it's going to be roses and bubbles. That is not the goal. The goal is to understand that we're here to keep our to keep our focus on our life. Whatever that looks like for you. And to not get caught up in following fellow man. Because just as we are navigating our way through it, through this wilderness of life, others are as well. So receive the message. Don't praise the messenger. Because that's not who gives you your inheritance. God does. I hope this has helped in some shape, form, or fashion, or at least giving you something to think about. Until next time, be blessed. And please don't forget to smile.